everyone! Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to make Korean chicken porridge in the instant pot, also known as gruel or chuk. So if you guys want to know how to make this, please hit that subscribe button and watch me cook. So if you guys have ever made this, then you know that it usually takes about an hour on top of the stove top. And we are just going to cut the time in half and it's going to be just as delicious and easy to do. This is something we normally make when you're sick or you need to have something more bland, but I do add more flavor to mine because it's it's just better that way. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to start off with our rice. And if you guys saw earlier, I did leave it in a bowl soaking in water for an hour earlier. Make sure you do wash your rice a few times just to make sure you get a lot of the just dirt and whatever, the starch off of it. And then we could throw it all into the Instant Pot with your frozen chickens. The beauty about pressure cooking is that you can throw everything in all at once, frozen or not, you don't have to defrost it. And don't worry about cutting it up, we're just going to cut it up with some scissors later. Go ahead and throw everything inside, close it up. If you guys have a porridge setting, go ahead and click the porridge setting and put it up to 30 minutes. If not, just pressure cook it on high for 30 minutes as well. 30 minutes have gone by and we're just going to let it sit here like this while we go prep a few things right before we throw everything in. My kids don't like the green onions inside of the porridge itself, so I'm just going to use it to garnish with, so I'm just using one. You guys can put it inside or you can just garnish with it like I am later. But chop these up into small pieces just so you can sprinkle it right on top. Next we're just going to grab a couple of eggs, just crack two eggs right into a bowl. And all we're going to do is beat this up just a little bit. Beat this up, does that sound right? Beaten eggs. Mix it up. Stir it up. Yeah, you know. Beat the eggs. <laughs> okay, now that we have all that done and that's all we needed to do for now, carefully go ahead and press the vent button or pull it back, let the steam out, and it's going to get really messy. I ended up just throwing a paper towel on there to contain some of the mess, and I wanted to show you guys because it does get really yucky back here. So. <laughs> just be forewarned about that. Be very, very careful with this because it was so hot that I actually had to grab a rag to lift the lid off of it. I couldn't believe how hot it was. It was the hottest I've ever felt it. But just be careful when you take the lid off. Make sure you put the lid away from your face. Now grab your tong and some scissors and start cutting these up into bite-sized pieces or just cut them up to whatever size it is that you want to cut them up to. I did do both chickens and then when I was done with both chickens, I did go ahead and look inside my pot and then just chopped up whatever it is that was a bit larger than I would have liked. Now let's grab the eggs that we were uh, we had just beaten and we're just going to pour that right in there because it's so hot in there it's going to cook all of this right here. Don't even worry about that. Just grab your ladle and then start mixing it all up in there. And I noticed when I was mixing it, it wasn't sticking on the bottom. You know, you guys know, if you guys saw me before, I did not like making rice inside of this Instant Pot because everything got stuck and it was really difficult to wash. But I found that this was not very difficult because nothing was stuck to the actual pot. But you want this consistency here. You'll see that the rice is a little bit more expanded and it's a lot softer, which is what you want when you make porridge. I am adding a tablespoon of sesame oil right into the pot and I'm going to mix this all up. If you want to skip this part, you can. If you want to use like ponzu sauce or whatever else, you can also do that. But this gives it just a lighter, a little bit of a nuttier, I guess, kind of flavor, which is what I prefer. But to serve it, all I did was add some salt and pepper to taste with some sesame seeds and our green onions right on top. Just make sure you mix all this up and be careful because it is super hot. So if you guys like this recipe, please hit that subscribe button, like it, and share it. And until the next meal, thank you for watching. Watch me cook.